Everyone, hi. Welcome to our third and final sculpting pass over our Emily Blunt portrait within Blender. During the first pass over this head, we went from 0% all the way up to 80%. We had essentially sketched out the likeness. Without paying too much attention to being exactly precise in terms of proportions or in terms of perspective, we simply wanted to move fast to capture the likeness efficiently. It is during the second pass over this head that we really addressed any type of major proportional issues or anthropometric issues. It means that we can now do what everyone loves to do when it comes to sculpting, which is to endlessly zoom on our model and obsess over the smaller details. I like to refer to the third pass as going from 90% all the way up to 95% or so, which is usually a pretty good place to stop most likenesses. Going beyond that, most people won't really be able to appreciate the effort that you will be putting into them. And I also like to think about the number 95% because it actually kind of communicates something, which is that likenesses are never truly done. They are only abandoned at some point. If we want to get good at something, we obviously have to push beyond our comfort zone, of course. But there is also a point where pushing further is simply useless. Like it or not, our time is limited, and we obviously always want to make sure that we are using it in the most effective way. During this third and final sculpting pass, then, we will also do a deep dive within the anatomy of all of the facial features of our model. So the facial anatomy classes that are on algang.studio are very complementary to everything that we will talk about today. So it's all about sculpting today and simply refining all of the details that we have created so far. One thing that's very clear, though, looking at this uh, particular blend here is um, the nose. You can see how deviated her nose is actually to the side here. If you kind of uh, take a look at this here as I go, like my nose here is still symmetrical. And you can see that it's definitely uh, definitely needs to be pushed uh, off to the side here a little bit. Call that a deviated septum uh, when the middle of the nose like this is kind of offset to one side. Kind of makes you wonder what happened for her septum to be deviated like that, because uh, that often happens if someone like breaks their nose. Something like that may actually happen in those particular cases. Someone's going to break their nose and then uh, it's going to heal, but uh, slightly off to the side there. Yeah, see, so we're starting to get some of that orbital fat that we can read, and we definitely don't have the same shapes here. So here I can see a little bit of a what looks to me like a concave line. Here I have a bit of a convex line. So that's a pretty major difference. Interesting. So I guess we just need to go to town, try to get the exact same shadow going on in both cases here. So yeah, I can see we're starting to get that nice almond shape here that we're looking for. We can perhaps start a little bit of the polish pass here. You can see here with a very, very small amount of pressure that I'm putting on. I'm really not putting on a lot of pressure. I'm not really flattening. I am just getting rid of those little artifacts that are on the surface. I mean, I am technically flattening, but I am not. Um, it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm really just just creating new planes that were necessarily there before. You know, you can still see that there's just a little bit of uh, imperfection that is kind of left over here. Um, it becomes very, very subtle, but I just I really like it personally. I just always find that the smooth brush is just a little too uh, indiscriminate. Often, I'm definitely feeling Emily Blunt. Like, this is clearly her now. There's really no doubt um, anymore. Now, I think I'm getting pretty satisfied with this. If your head is all filled up here and ready to explode with a lot of anatomical details, I do invite you to go and check out those facial anatomy classes on algang.studio because we do a very, very deep dive of all of the facial features, structures, facial fat pads, and muscles that you need to know to really master facial anatomy sculpting. Next class, then, we will move on to retopology of this particular head, which will also set us up really nicely afterward to start to talk about skin pores and other high-frequency surface details that we can throw on this head. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.